Harumwoti walks in silence along a lonely trail, a trail that her sister Kokyangwoti led the Hopi Sinam on their journey to Masao's home, where a covenant was made between the great deity Masao and the children of the people. And as she walked, she showed them the plants in her garden, for she was the mother of all vegetation and all hard substances. Every religious way of life for us starts with water. The water is so sacred to us. It is who we are. We are made of water. All living beings need water. And she held their hands and showed them how to use the land in a proper and respectful way. We used to play with water. We'd have to haul our own water to the springs and we would play with it. And one day my grandfather yelled at us not to be playing with water. He would tell us that if we are not careful with, with our water, uh, water resources, we're going to have to pay like $50 just to drink a cup of water. 97% of water on earth is salt, salted water, ocean, sea. That only 3% is fresh water. And of that 3%, two thirds is in the form of ice. This is a fact. Yet we continue to waste and abuse water. When the Hopis first got here, they had a gourd. And uh, many of the clans, when they came and migrated into this desert, this arid desert, uh, they had powers where they put their gourd down, they could dig a spring, and a spring would appear. And uh, I think that there's always been that connection, you know, there's, uh, even with the Navajos, they have a water clan, and the Hopis have clan people that take care of the water. And prayers are always made to the water. If we don't have water, we don't have life. The Hopi people, made a mistake in 1966. We broke a covenant. The covenant was to treat water with sacred energy. In 1966, the Hopi Tribal Council, without fully understanding what they were getting themselves into, and under tremendous political pressure from the Arizona politicians, the Arizona business community, the energy conglomerates, the United States government, under tremendous pressure signed an agreement with the uh, world's largest mining company, Peabody Coal to mine 300 million tons of coal from Black Mesa and to transport this amount of coal using pristine water from the middle of the desert. I don't think Hopis really had a choice at that time. Even if the Hopis had said no, it would have still happened. A gentleman by the name of Vernon Masayasva, you know, we became acquainted and we used to talk at hours, you know, for hours talking about what the Peabody Mining has done to, to the Hopi people. I'm one of the water carriers and we have to go down to the springs and it's a very important element for our religious purposes. Really hurts me when we go down to get water below the mesas where the springs, some of the springs are. When you get down there and you don't see the water 
high up as it used to be, you automatically think about the people throughout in this whole earth. Because what you're, whatever you're doing is for all mankind. It makes it very difficult for us to do carry our part of our religious way of life for everybody when other interferences like Peabody is draining our, our water resources and for years our traditional people, Hopi people have been trying to stop the mining and you know they don't want to listen to anybody. Hopi has been here, mark this, the earth, the universe, four times. Not for ourselves, but for the one who had who is a owner of this. The third world, you know, was destroyed because of technology, greed. Now we when we came to this fourth world, we told the great spirit Masao, we made a covenant that we would help take care of this land. And um, we're trying. We're really trying hard to do that, but with all the other interferences, just for a capital gain. You know, we're, sometimes I feel so sad that what I tried to do during my ceremony was not effective. The Hopi people have their own understanding of how hydrology works. And we tell the public through our songs, through our dances, through our ceremonies. It's our way of explaining our understanding of what water is all about. The sun breathes, brings up the moisture of the water. We call it evaporation or whatever. The sun does it. And then the sun also creates the wind so that so the Clouds would travel onto the land and then comes back down as precipitation, as rain. It comes down and then it starts its journey back to the motherland, the Badimutas. And in this cycle, we are participants, we are not separate. The hope is say the water underneath us breathes in the rain. The clouds breathe up the moisture from the top, from the bottom, up to the roots of the woods. When the water underneath us breathes in the water, it has to breathe it out. And that's where you see the springs. They're the breathing holes. San Francisco Peak is a breathing hole. If you don't believe me, watch one day when the sky is cloudless, a little cloud's going to pop out of it. So, some of you have seen that already. So to us, if this is a living thing, living energy. This is the high, this is our understanding of how we are all integrated into the water way of life. Water is the most important thing. We were conceived in water, you know. Everybody was conceived in water. Through 
for my people when we use water for ceremonies or for prayers. There's a, a special name that we use for it, a special prayer that goes along with that name. And we can't, we don't just take the water and expect it to work, expect it to help a patient. There's a special prayer. Even when two people are getting married, we use the water for washing hands. It's a renewal. It's it's a kind of it's a contract. You know, you you're washing each other's hands. It's changing who we are. It's changing our culture. It's changing our way of life. This disregard and this disrespect for water is changing who we are. Three point three million gallons of pristine potable drinking water is pumped daily from this confined aquifer. That's 1.3 billion gallons a year. And since 1970, 40 billion gallons pumped from the pristine and most significant water source in the region. Peabody wants to expand their mining operation and open a new pit on Hopi partition land. This is an area known as J23. This would increase coal production to 5.7 million tons a year and increase the water used by 33%. <laughs> desert, on sacred ground, Peabody operates the only coal slurry pipeline of its kind left in the United States. The springs are drying up. Why? Because their breathing is becoming weaker and weaker. So this is what we see with our eyes. The people that are overseeing uh, the impact of Peabody mining on our water resources, they don't go out there. They don't talk to the Hopis. They don't visit the springs. They look at their computers, their models, and say, well, our model says we're going to be still you know, our model says that Peabody is going to just take one half cup of water from a 55 barrel can during the life of its own. They're so precise in their view. They're just going to take one, one tenth of one percent of stored water, according to their model. And they pay two million dollars for it. They're boasting. But the Hopis are saying, then how come one cup of wash is dry? The pigeon spring is dry. Hood Bella is not as strong as it used to be. No more bakami spring, squirrel spring, dog spring, pigeon spring. All dry. And the hope is said because the whole system is out of balance now. Peabody uh, gets away with a lot because they're so isolated up there and there isn't um, an EPA office or um, a Sierra Club person that goes up there and monitors or checks. And they've gotten away with a lot in terms of just using the groundwater, um, you know, leakages of the slurry pipeline in certain places, the reclamation plan that the mine has, has gone through. Um, it's been a, a history of just real problems that I'm not too sure how to solve. We're just right now trying to get Peabody to stop pumping and hope that it's not too little too late, that 
there still is enough of that groundwater to sustain their springs. You know, you come out to Hopi, I see old pictures, you know, in libraries and magazines, how we used to be. You come out there today now, it's not even near anything like that anymore. You know, it's, it's really sad. We talked to an elderly Diné man, and he said that you could just dig your foot into the ground and the water will start coming out. Now you've got to dig like so many feet into the earth to to get that same flow of water. But it's still, it's not as much as it used to be. Peabody people have said we're only taking a minute portion of the water. We hope that that's true, but that does not excuse a mining company from pumping 3.3 million gallons a day from the middle of a desert to transport for it. It doesn't justify it. It simply is immoral, unethical. We're basically having to repair the sins of our grandparents and parents and um, it's a very complex problem. They, they're seeing it in their villages that there's, they're drying up. What's gonna last longer, the water or your money? Chanto, Arizona, uh, and I'm here standing with other Diné people, standing with our brothers and sisters, Hopi people in the our Black Mesa Water Coalition, and we ask that the Hopi tribe work with the Navajo tribe in stopping this waste of water, putting aside the harsh words and the, the uh, politics of the past to work on sustaining our people, not just Navajo, not just Hopi people, people of this land. Yeah. Yeah. Wayne, can you guys please listen? To stop Peabody from using our water. That's all we want. That today we want to hear everyone's voice right now. We want, we want to hear your voice. Just at least acknowledgement or at least something about how you guys feel. When you turn on your switch at nighttime, think about us. Think about our future generation. What will we have left for them? I think that's why I feel like you know, I can't make a contribution as far as um, children go because I want to make sure that this world is going to be safe for them to live in and, you know, it's going to preserve on for future generations. I think we really need to address the fact that Mother Earth is running out of water. I hope it's not too late for us. Before money, became important. There was always water, and water sustained the people. You cannot sell the water for any amount of money. For money can go, and when water goes, the people leave. There is no home for the people.
Did you ever hold your eyes in your hands and just cry, cry, cry? Cause you just could not believe all the sorrow that you saw in this world. For all its wild, kooky genes, thanks you can even get yourself behind. There's a threaded ball of mystery you will all your life be tempted to unwind. And it's a wild, crazy life. Good luck out there. It's a wild, crazy life In the cradle, we don't ever get to choose The messages we'll hear And then when we're older, we're lucky If any particle of truth still ring clear Don't be surprised if you get slapped around a time or two. Hey, that's the mildest of the horrors since our souls long ago were split in two. And it's a wild, crazy life. Good luck, y'all.